Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another College Football 25 Dynasty video and today I'm gonna be going over the best ways to increase your program prestige. Before we do get into the video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and if you haven't already, check out Underdog. The link will be down below in the description. My code matches your first deposit up to 250 and there's new specials every day for new users who sign up with my code. Signing with that code goes a long way in supporting the channel and I greatly appreciate all of you that do. So one thing to keep in mind when increasing program prestige, every program will be different in a few key aspects that you do want to keep in mind. So remember, although all these tips will apply to all schools, there are some things you can't change. One example of this would be academic prestige. There are some schools that will just have it and there's some that won't and there's really no way to increase that. So do keep that in mind. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna be starting with the Blue Devils, Duke, and I'm gonna go show you guys how to do this. So when trying to start a new dynasty and you wanna increase their prestige, right? The Blue Devils are a two-star program. And the reason you wanna increase it is very simple. Increasing your prestige makes everything easier in Dynasty. Also, that's probably the goal of most rebuilds to get them up there. But for every half a star you add, recruiting gets easier, winning gets easier. When I say winning, so the more stars you have, you probably improved other things, right? Increasing your stars is the ultimate goal of this game. And obviously, when you're a four to five star, it's very closer in terms of it's probably harder to make that half jump. It's probably easier to lose it. But when you're a lower star, you definitely want to get up into at least that three to four tier. So in my opinion, the first thing you want to do when starting a new Dynasty is go over to recruiting. And then you want to tab over to the my school tab this is going to be your one-stop shop to see everything that needs to be pretty much improved with your school i'm going to take you guys through all these different motivations for recruits and exactly how you can bring each one up individually first one playing style is very very specific to the user and specific to kind of what you're doing this one doesn't exactly matter in terms of how you plan on building this one this can be changed week to week for instance i play as lsu in my dynasty i lose emory jones the star tackle every single season because he wants me to run the ball a lot and I pass the ball a lot. So that's one of those things where you kind of have to just take this week by week. This isn't something I can like give advice on, like, oh, you got to get it up this way. You kind of just have to focus on what recruits you have. And you want to be looking at this every year. Uh, let's just say you're looking at a new recruit and their deal breaker is playing style A plus and something. You're going to have to start doing that throughout the season to either unlock the deal breaker or retain it. So make sure you are looking through each one. These are archetypes based on the players. So for instance, if you have a vertical threat tight end that you recruited and they really, really have a preference for staying at an A deal breaker for throwing the ball a lot if you start running the ball a lot your vertical tight end may request a transfer so step aside this is outside of the team prestige but it does matter a lot and if you read in the bottom left corner team prestige is the composite value of all your my school grades so quite literally you must improve these to bring up your stars i've seen some people comment hey i won the national championship i did x y and z why did not go up well there's other things into play here than just winning although winning is one of the most important parts that's probably one of the first things just win a lot and that will help improve other things but there are other things in play for instance proximity to home this is one that you cannot change so understand that proximity to home is just one of those things while it doesn't technically add to team prestige because it's not an a c or d it's just something you have it does play a large role in terms of if you're somewhere really far away from where most great recruits come you're gonna have a hard time there next is championship contender so this is the first one that you have a chance to really really change and you do want to improve this championship contender does change week to week and it's based on how likely your team has it to make it to the playoffs and then win the championship so if you start the season off one and three even as like georgia or lsu this will start to drop this will start to drop you will start to lose deal breakers on players so you want to constantly be winning and staying in the playoff race as long as you do that aspect your program will start to rise in stars as long as you stay in the playoff race every year this should slowly come up to a c plus and then a b a b plus an a and it will change very quickly i've seen this change in one season a lot so make sure you're just constantly winning that's first and foremost and this is part of like when you're simming games if you're losing in sims it's kind of why it's important to play them because if you're losing in sims just trying to make it through a season to try to get it up it's going to kind of hurt you the next one is program tradition so this is something that you can't change initially off rip because theoretically if duke hasn't won much in their history heisman winners national titles etc this isn't something that's going to start off that you can change but if you do go through a season and you play well and you make it to the playoffs and potentially get a heisman winner that will go up if you win a natty eventually that will go up so that is something you can change but that will take time but this is a very important one program tradition and championship contender are two that just winning and playing well with stats will bring up and those two alone will bring your stars up the next one right here is going to be campus lifestyle this is one of the ones that you can improve this is, is what it is duke campus lifestyle is just a c plus 
So understand that each school does have some limitations and definitely keep that in mind when picking your team. I know some people may just be fans of these teams, so that is irrelevant. Pick your favorite team. But if you are in an online league that's competitive, make sure you are taking, taking a look at these intangible ones, the ones that you can't touch, the ones that are stuck like that, because those are ones you're gonna have to deal with. Those are ones that are gonna be your shortcomings in all recruiting aspects. The next one's gonna be stadium atmosphere. And this is actually a really important one and one that you can change. Winning more at home, playing well at home, winning games will just start to bring this up. If you look down below, it shows you the factors there as well. So home winning percentage, 53% is high. Home attendance percentage, high. Game attendance average high. Those all go up as you play well. And then current home winning streak. If you go on like a six, seven game winning streak, that'll be high. And then of course your prestige matters too. So actually bringing up other things to increase your prestige will increase your stadium and will increase your value as a program, which all in all does affect each other. So keep that in mind. A lot of these things all correlate. So you kind of have to do a lot of them in, in tandem to get your stars up. And that's why some people are like, oh, you know, I did this, but why didn't I made the playoffs year one? Why did my star go up? It's like, well, you didn't win a Heisman. You didn't win a national championship. So obviously these didn't fly up. You didn't do X, Y, and Z. Maybe you didn't, you didn't get a lot of stats. You didn't bring guys to the pro, which is the next one, pro potential. You look right there, first round pick, second, third, and fourth through seven. Getting guys to be drafted in the fourth through seven round is just low. It's not a huge impact. You definitely want to start getting guys into at least the third round with a low program and then work your way up. Honestly, the best thing you could probably do is if you're a low program, what I would do, I would go just crazy with one or two guys. Because getting, if, I've noticed if you do kind of average with a lot of guys, you would think, oh, these guys are doing pretty well. They must be fourth or seventh. And it's the NFL draft. Only X amount of players get drafted. You'd be surprised by how many players you think are doing pretty well and they're not even draft prospects. I would just go, if you're a low program, like a Duke, I would just take your running back, your wide receiver quarterback, take people that you can easily control and just spam them. Get them so crazy that you get an instant first round pick. You get a guaranteed first round pick. That is the best thing you can do, quite honestly, for a low program because getting first round picks is a very high impact. If you could spam a wide receiver quarterback duo, like almost two Heisman type guys, you'll end up probably getting at least two first, if not a second and a first, maybe even three if you have a crazy tight end or another wide receiver in the mix. And that will give you a huge bump to pro potential. This could easily go up to a B. B plus very quickly. And that alone will give you a big benefit. And the reason these are important too is not just for increasing your prestige, it is for recruiting, which goes a long way. Prestige plus these factors are how you recruit. So now for this one, you technically can't control it, but you technically can. It really comes down to what you wanna do here. So you can just play along and as you do improve your program and you do start to get better games in your schedule, you will start to get more nationally televised games and games of the week. However, you can also manipulate this. In week one, you can customize your schedule. You technically can put Georgia or put some other four-star programs on there, and you will just naturally start to get TV games. So let's say you're playing in an offline franchise and you, you're just killing the CPU. You're pretty much winning every game, even with a low program. You technically could just throw a bunch of great SEC type teams, great store teams on your roster or on your schedule and just start to beat them. And you'll start to get these games. And you're also good. They're already going to be televised because they are big programs playing. So you technically could just do that and if you get games of the week played as high and just national tv games played as high and stream games is played so just playing in them will give it to you and give you more brand exposure in general so you technically don't have to win them although i'd still recommend winning because here's the problem if you do just get the stream games it's low or you do just get the tv games it's, it's medium but you're going to start to lose and you're going to start to hurt your championship contender and everything else so i would recommend you still win them so that's where the risk comes with doing this you may end up hurting yourself a little bit by doing this but it is a way to kind of manipulate it so that's up to you if you're on an online league you probably can't do that as far as commissioners go and other users but it is something you can consider academic prestige and this is where it gets a little glitchy kind of in some ways you can pick a team like stanford duke rice northwestern cal ucla and kind of get that a plus you can't change this so you can in some instances take a team with an a plus academic prestige and then go ahead and build everything else up although there's some things you can't build up like campus lifestyle but that is something to consider next is conference prestige that's all comes down to conferences so technically if you're in a bad conference you're not going to get that so again to manipulate this you either a can move yourself up you know legitimately you can say after years of being in the pac-12 or the acc maybe you've been moved right but you can move this you can go into custom conferences and move yourself to the sec to give yourself that prestige a lot harder games obviously or acc is still you know it's still an a as marked here when it says b plus on the side but it's not bad but if you do want that prestige you do want that boost in recruiting you can move yourself to a to a better conference or you can storybook work your way up right then you have coach stability. This is one of the ones that is weird. So coach stability is, you can impact this. It's really just about staying off the hot seat and having low staff turnover. And also something I've noticed, contract years plays a role. So for instance, if you start with a coach and they only have one year left in their contract, that year your coach stability is gonna go down a lot because a lot of recruits are thinking, this coach, I'm coming to play for him. He may not be here next year. So 
that, that that's going to be one of those things that just kind of move around but low staff turnover so not firing and hiring coordinators every season and trying to like figure out the best one that's going to hurt you so don't be doing that and just of course years at school after three four five years at the same school you're going to just have that maxed out right so that's great make sure to be following the coach stability thing because that was a big deal i had i took like a c to a d in that once my coach was on his last year of his contract so keep that in mind and that's especially because it was like year one so my coach only had one year with it and they had contract remaining was zero so just keep that in mind then coach prestige this is something that you also can improve hiring good coaches, consistently meeting the expectations of your contract. So go read your coaching contract, look at what you kind of signed up for, playoff appearances, what you expect to do, expect to win, stay ahead of that. You'll get the coach prestige up. These are a lot of the easy ones that you can bring up to bring your stars up. And then if you go on athletic facilities, this is just increasing your team prestige. So this will naturally go up by doing the rest. So win, recruit well, do all the other things well that I said, and you will bring that up. Then last we have playing time. This one won't directly apply to your prestige, but this is important for recruiting. So do keep this in mind. You can look at your roster. If you have two five-star QBs and you're trying to recruit another one, their playing time is going to be really bad because they don't have an expectation to play, especially if they're freshmen or sophomore juniors and they're not seniors. So do keep that in mind. But overall, guys, that was the best way to increase your prestige. So pretty much you want to just look at this page, take it one by one on a notepad on the side. Just be like, okay, I can improve this by doing this. Make sure to be monitoring these every week. You can see kind of what's working, what isn't. But this is the page. This is the way you're going to improve it. A lot of people were just simming through and winning. Just like, oh, okay, this is it. But there's a lot of other things that come to play here that all need to go up to bring your star prestige up. If you're a one-star program and you really focus on all these, you could probably get it up quicker. If you're a four and a half, those minuscule upgrades to a five is going to be very hard. Even as LSU, you could win a lot, do a lot of things. And it's hard to get that extra star because you're, you can lose these very easily, but getting them up even higher than they already are is very hard. But that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy from just the channel sub. Give this video a big thumbs up. Check out Underdog down below. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.